I want to make bread. I'm going to make bread today. And uh, it's a great recipe that I've got for you that is my mother's. She used to make this for us all the time. She always made five loaves at a time. We're just making two, okay, um, with this recipe. But it was the first bread I learned to make because it's foolproof, successful every time, and delicious. And you can use part whole wheat in it as well, whole wheat flour. So if you've got whole wheat flour, this will be a good time to use it. Okay. So I'm going to turn around and let Bobby um, film me here. I don't know if anybody's watching, but that's okay because it'll it'll save for later. And people want to know how to make a good bread recipe. I can pull this out, of course. It doesn't no, have to check. Leave that tucked in. Okay. Tucked in. Okay, so you have lots of power. Okay, Sean is on. Hi. Okay, so the first thing to, to get started, I have put one cup of rolled oats, like the fat ones, the large flake oats, one cup of rolled oats. You could probably use the quick oats as well, not the instant, if you wanted to, if, you, if that's all you got, it's okay. One cup and two and a quarter cups of boiling water. So this is really hot. This is too hot right now to make bread with because it, it's like my metal bowl is hot to the touch. So I've given it five minutes to soften the oats. Now I'm going to cool it, and you, if you've got time, just cool it on the counter, but I'm going to cool it in ice water because I want you guys to be able to see my whole thing. We're going to cool that down to 110 degrees. So this is my thermometer. This is just a meat thermometer, right? You probably have one in the drawer. It will show you 110. I know this is more than 110, so I'm going to use this to measure temperature. 110 degrees is the Fahrenheit, is the magic temperature for bread making. Okay, so that's one prep thing. That was one cup of rolled oats, two and a quarter cups of boiling water to let that soften for about five minutes. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna get 110 degree water over here in my bowl to soften the yeast. And my measuring cup, it's gone, here it is. So now this time I can control the water, I don't need boiling water, so I'm going to do one and a half cups of warm, just warm water. Again, I'm going to measure it. A little warmer than my hand, right? Okay, we want one and a half. Let's see how we do here. One and a half. It's just, it's just a little bit warmer. But the bowl will cool it a little bit too. One and a half. Let's Let's just see what that's like if I put my thermometer in. Yeah, not 110. I can go warmer than that. So I'm going to pour out a cup. Go a little bit warmer. Just a little bit warmer than my hand, though. Not too warm, right? Measuring the temperature. Ah. And it's pretty close to 110. It's not going over. And that's a good thing because it because too hot kills the yeast, but yeast needs warm to rise. So in this recipe, everything's nice and warm. That's why it rises so well. So one and a half cups of water. Yeast, I need two and a half tablespoons. Okay, I cannot remember what that is on the packages. So double check on your packages, see how much it is in tablespoons. And um, you need two and a half tablespoons. So, one. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot something. Sorry, I'll do it in a second. Two. And a half a tablespoon is a teaspoon and a half. Teaspoon and a half. Now we're going to add to this some honey or sugar, whichever you have. If you have honey, use honey because it's lovely in it. But if you have only have sugar, that's okay as well. Like a, a tablespoon. Thing to grow on. It uses the sweetness to grow. So all these 
pink on the tail. Let's give it a little whisk. And set that aside just for another little minute. Let's check our oats. Where are we on there? We want that no more than 110. It can go a little more than 110 because yeah, it's a little more, but because I'm going to put some things in that'll cool it down. It's around 120. It's okay. I'm going to be putting some things in there that'll cool it down. Okay. So into here, into this bowl with the oats, I'm going to put a little bit of molasses, about a quarter cup. Oh, I'll do the oil, some oil as well. So you're going to do the oil first because it helps it to slide out. About a half a cup of oil, vegetable oil, half a cup. Okay, half a cup of oil. And a quarter cup of molasses. Put the oil in first and then your molasses just slides right out. Okay. helps it to be a nice brown bread and you want a tablespoon of salt my tablespoon is messed up there so I'm going to put three teaspoons <laughs> a tablespoon of salt which is three teaspoons one bread takes a lot of salt to taste right okay whisk that up Okay, good. So let's just measure the temperature of that again. It was at 120, but I think with all those cold things in there, we should be under 110 now. Ah, this thing is slippery today. Yeah, it's that's because I cleaned it with um, Lysol. You shouldn't have. <laughs> it's not sticky. Okay, so it's under 110. That's great. Okay, so that's the um the flavoring of this bread now hard flour i have white whole wheat is okay too or half and half if you have if you have whole wheat and then you've only got all purpose white go ahead and do use that so in all the amount of flour you want is three and a half cups i don't have any whole wheat i took out my whole wheat this morning i smelled it it smells rancid i should have kept it in the freezer whole wheat because it has wheat germ in it it has oil and it can go rancid if you've got old whole wheat smell it first if it smells funky that means it's rancid don't use it um so that's what i have to I have to uh, get rid of mine so i'm gonna have to use all white but you can uh, i know anna was asking me can you use whole wheat for this because she's got some red fight so because it's three and a half cups you're going to use like Use like two cups of your whole wheat and one and a half of whatever white flour you've got. All purpose is fine. Okay, because you've got the hardness with the whole wheat. So I'm doing three and a half cups. This is going to make two loaves. And they can be either loaves that you do in a loaf pan or you can do them round on a cookie. She, well, she, talk about that later after this is risen. I'm going to come back later. What was that? Two? Let me get my calculator. Sorry? Let me get my calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I think three that's half? three, yeah. And a half. Okay. And everything's in the big bowl. Everything is going to go into here now. Okay, so we're going to put the, the yeast in, yeast and water. And all my oatmeal mixture. Everything in the same bowl. And just give her a stir. Oh my goodness, this is way too liquid. Seems liquid anyway. I'm going to have to add more flour. Oh mom, what have I done wrong? Is it okay. not thickening up? No, that's, that's way too sloppy. Okay. My mother always doubled this recipe. So, and I'm cutting it in half. So. Okay. 
Oh, I put too much water. Okay, we're gonna increase the flour by at least a full cup here. Okay, back to the oats. When you did your oats, just one cup of water with those oats. I did two. Okay, just one cup of water with those oats. I'm gonna give you this recipe properly later. I don't wanna waste this though. So I'm gonna add a full cup of flour here. See what I can do here. And it feels to the hands really nice and warm, which is why this recipe, as I said, for beginners works really well because it really um, starts warm and that helps it to rise. Getting my hands in here. Very soft. It should be a soft dough, but I made it too soft because I did too much water in the oats. Okay, now we're coming together. So, <clears throat> Bobby, are you watching the bowl? You got your your so that everybody can see inside the bowl. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm beginning the kneading, but again, it's a really sticky, still pretty sticky. mess up. That is still way too sticky. I hope I end up with my flour. I'm going to put the last of my flour. And you know you can always judge, you know you have to you have to judge with baking bread anyway. You're always adding more flour during the kneading process, right? Whatever it says on the in the recipe it's usually a range. Now we're getting somewhere. And the flour gets kneaded in as you go. Some people like to knead it right on the counter with some flour on the counter. It's up to you. Yeah, we're getting there now. I'm going to get three loaves out of this for sure. Still on my hands here. Um, yeah, so this is uh, my, as I said, my mom's recipe. Mom is 90 and she's staying in a home and I talked to her this morning and she's doing, you know, the Brazilian old bird that she is, she's hanging in there. She's in a retirement home, not a long-term care home and there's been no outbreaks there. So we're very lucky there. And you need to knead this for a good 10 minutes. Now, if you have a stand mixer, you can put your dough cook on and let it knead in the, on the stand mixer, which is, I would be doing if my stand, new stand mixer had come, but it hasn't. I think deliveries are really, really taxed right now. I ordered it because my, my stand mixer broke and I ordered a replacement. It hasn't come yet. That's okay because kneading by hand is good exercise, good stress relief. <laughs> Love it. You're on for arm wrestling tonight. <laughs> I would not win an arm wrestle, that's for sure. flour in the bottom of my bowl, which I'm trying to get kneaded in here. There's still dough on my fingers. Boy, oh boy, I told you guys this would be a totally successful recipe, and then I, like I said, my mother always made five loaves at a time because she had five children, and I thought I'd just half it, and I was doing the halving, and my math went off on the water. Hi, Bobby. How you doing? Which Bobby is that? Barkwell. Hi, Bobby Barkwell. How you doing? <laughs> you gonna make bread? 
<laughs> you could, you know. You'd make yourself very popular. <laughs> so, yeah, keep a little bit of flour in the bowl as you need, like a little bit around the edges. That's how my mother taught me, actually. And you're going to knead it until it starts to fight back. Right now, it's still not fighting back. It's still, um, it's still uh, letting me punch it. When it starts to want to spring back, that's when it's needed enough. Oh, Bobby's doing well. That's good. I understand you've got people bringing meals to you. It's pretty cool. Take eight to ten minutes of uh, meeting. Feels good. Start to fight back. Or at least bounce back, we'll say, not fight back. Okay, so I'm going to set this to um, rise and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to send this to the food inspectors. not drafty that's all it'll it's going to rise for about an hour and a half to two hours and so in about an hour and a half to two hours it should be mounded up here like this and when that happens i'm going to punch it down make two loaves out of it and bake it at 375 for about 40 minutes i'm going to come back to do that and um, i'm going to be putting it in the oven and then i promised to make lemon curd today as well so at that point we'll make lemon curd so you know around, uh, we'll say two o'clock. Okay, around two o'clock, we're gonna, we're gonna do that, okay? Great, see you later. Bye, thanks for watching. Bye now.